and gentlemen, welcome back to another episode of the Rupee Cast featuring Call of War 2 The Elite Mod. Red Rupee here tonight, call the shots for you as always, and we've got a three on three on Argus Desert Gate, everyone's favorite desert laney map. EM7 starting us off as the commando now for the red team. Dodge playing as the Imperial Guard Inquisitor. Which way? Play in the Space Marine Apothecary, rounding out the Reds. On the blue team, we've got Iron Warrior as this kind of garishly green Chaos Lord. Very shiny indeed. Great Cornholio as the Space Marine Tech Marine, bearing that nice pretty red star there. And Dandalus, once we catch up with his Sorcerer, there we go, as the Chaos Sorcerer. That's all our players. We've got a crew, a motley crew of Orcs, Imperial Guard, and Space Marines fighting the corrupt chaos and the corrupt apparently tech marine fighting alongside of them. So it looks like up top we're gonna have the sorcerer, probably gonna have the tech marine head up there as well once things get going. Up top normally we'll see kind of a little bit of back and forth until one side or the other locks it down for tier one and then pretty much it'll stay in their hands till tier two, especially if something like a turret or something along those lines comes onto the field. That says commando knob does have some options. If a turret does go down, he might be able to get some burners and sneak some sluggers up in on it. But until then, we're just going to have some green cover firefights there. Doombolts kind of swinging it to the advantage of the blue team right now. And now the tech marine coming in on the flanking position. Looks like it's going to be two on one up here. Dodge now moving up the side as well. Down on the bottom part of the map on the resource lane. Looks like the red team's managed to secure the contested power point here. Apothecary heals up those tactical marines just in the nick of time. Good timing on that heal. Probably prevented a model from going down, considering how low they already are yet again. Apothecary, I think, should be able to finish this engagement out for himself. Uh, meanwhile, up top, Stun Bomb goes down on the tax. Dodge now moving in with the Inquisitor. Doombolt's going off and hitting nothing. I don't know if that was because of the height difference there or whether he just completely misclicked and whiffed on those new balls. Tech Marine up top hanging behind some green cover as to be expected and the Reds are now charging in. No upgrade yet on that Sentinel because the Sentinel stomp here would be pretty critical. That said, going against three squads of Space Marines might be a bit much to get into melee range. Looks like I would I would guess that the Space Marines just have too much meat for the orcs to cut through here. Not really a lot of Imperial Guard support. I'm not sure where the rest of those are. The Guardsmen are down there. Uh, Dodge now getting some catechins. Didn't opt for that second squad of Guardsmen, keeping it, I guess, going for a light tier two or rather a light tier one, something like that. You'd think he'd use all that resource to drop some generators, though. Always got to figure if you're not going to be using that requisition right away, drop some gens, fill your gens up. It's always frustrating when you went for a big tier one and your allies don't drop any gems for you. That said, everybody looks a bit like Craig Cornholio sitting on just the tactical marines as well right now. Not full gen farms on either side, but we do have, that's the sound of a tarantula turret blasting away up top, so we've got the usual, what we would expect to see on this side of the map, this eastern victory point contest up here. We've got setup teams on both sides, a tech marine turret as well, so it's just going to be a camp fest until tier 2 comes around, or unless the commando knob can get some sneaky plays off here. The M7 looks like he's bringing on a second Luda boy squad, that could be interesting. As it stands right now, the Ludas do seem to be trumping those Havocs out in the distance. Your forces obey you. 421 to 500 right now, the red team managed to get those VPs down and not lose any of their own. And now that they won't be able to take this point, they should probably just move these Ludas back a little bit so they can guard the point without having to deal with this Tarantula turret. Actually, Havoc's hopping into the garrison there, and that's actually going to be a really difficult position to break. Sluggers are getting the burners, and they are cloaked, but I'm not sure where they're going. They're not moving in position on that turret. It looks like they're heading down bottom to maybe try to get a sneaky decap there. Dodge now with Catechins on the field. Still sitting on a huge pool of requisition, though. Probably should get another squad before heading into tier two. Get another squad of Guardsmen, if nothing else. But uh, looks like he's just going to be trying to fast tech here. Assault Space Marines and Sniper Scouts now on the field. Surprised to see Sniper Scouts uh, against Chaos, especially considering both Heretics and now Raptors. Maybe he hadn't seen those Raptors yet, but I feel like the shotgun would be much more useful at this point. Purification rights come down, gonna make those Assault Space Marines a terror to deal 
deal with. These scouts need to get the heck out of there. Those Raptors actually have a bit higher DPS than their Assault Marine counterparts, so you have to play it a bit more carefully when choosing whether to stay in that engagement or not. Assault Marines jumping out. Apothecary with the Sanguine Chainsword as well, so gonna be able to heal both himself and his allied troops here, but uh, as it stands right now, there's just a bit too much out here. Uh, Iron Warrior with two squads of Space Marines and a Raptor, so just a lot of beef over there that he needs to cut through. And with what he's currently got, it's just not gonna be enough. As it stands in the center, it looks like this Inquisitor getting perilously low there, but she's gonna be able to squeeze out of there. Just barely with about probably 15 health by the time the Chaos, or sorry, the Tech Marine stops shooting at her. Up top looks like, oh no, Luda's go down. Still one squad of Luda's on the field, but it looks like something crazy went down up here. Still has that turret up. Tech Marine falling back now does have that teleporter relay. Going to be camping that eastern lane for quite a while. Orcs trying to move in position to deal with all these space marines, but the shooter boys just aren't quite cutting it, especially with this sorcerer here. Able to drop those doom bolts right on their face. They need to get out of there. Luda's, oh wow, Luda's probably could have gotten tied up by that sorcerer. Stick bomb going down now on the suppressed squads. Good timing there with the suppression. Chaos heretics have to fall back. But as it stands, the blue team will be able to just keep falling back to that relay beacon and get right back on the field, so... The red should probably, other than just defending this power farm, should probably just be focusing on the center and western lanes and just ignore this till they have something that can easily deal with it. Got four players heading into tier two now. Dandel, or sorry, not Dandalus, but Dodge slightly ahead of the pack. Said it got, he, he must be planning on going for maybe some serious Stormtrooper play or something along those lines. He's got more requisition than I think I've seen in the game in quite, quite some time. Sitting on about 1,600. The Sentinel getting perilously low as well. Not quite managing to take it out though. Scout shotgun blasting away at this node. Shotguns actually do some pretty reasonable DPS against power nodes. They can then break them down pretty quickly. I think faster than tax. So Dodge is getting some Stormtroopers, realizing he needs to do something with that big pile of requisition. Cornholio going for Tier 2 now as well, finally. He actually has what looks to be a, a light Tier 1, but he also built both of those buildings. So he's committing not directly in field presence, but... Oh no, he thought he had the flank over here, but this Devastator is actually facing the perfect direction to stop that particular approach. Assault Space Marines now with the support of two Tactical Marine squads. We saw the Apothecary use a call-in right there, and I think with all of that, he will be able to push back this uh, this Chaos Force. I'm surprised he actually pulled those uh, Assault Space Marines out right there. I think he could have had them stick around, fixed them up, and sent them back into the fight. Up top looks like the other set of Luda boys got finished right off here. Finally getting a flank on this turret, those Slugger boys. Oh no, Slugger boys probably should have just used their flamers, but now, oh, the Havoc got upgraded to the Mark of Corn up there, and those shooters, or sorry, those Sluggers aren't going to get home. Completely locked down for the blue team right now. 396 to 426. The blue team is starting to close that victory point gap. Nice explosive shell right into all those heretics, but the auto cannon and all of these chaos space marines gonna easily route that commando knob. Apothecary not quite paying attention down here. Doesn't have both of his squads breaking his power, but now he's gonna have to fall back. Scout snipers pulling back as well. Devastator's moving a bit too far forward considering there's probably raptor jump going to happen here. But maybe he'll be able to hurt those raptors pretty well. Let the galaxy burn comes down. Knocking everything all over the place and burning up the terrain right here. Getting some last fire. Does manage to take out a second chaos raptor unit. But uh... As it stands, Devastators and Apothecary have to fall back for now. 
Dodge has been doing a good job of holding the center part of the map with that Sentinel and a little bit of guard play right there, but as it stands, I think he needs to support a little bit more on the top side if they want to break this position. He does have the Manticore now, which will be able to break some of these setup team positions. Death Dread just charging forward there. If that Death Dread gets in on that turret, that'll be plenty easy to deal with. Let's see, there is a Laz Cannon getting upgraded right now, however, though. That Death Dread needs to move quick if it doesn't want to find itself on the wrong side of some anti-vehicle weaponry here. Stick Bomb's going down on top of it. all of those Heretics. Heretics are actually pretty hard to take out with AoE when they're in their kind of worship circle right here. Death Dread does go down to the Laz Cannon. That was a short-lived life for that. Some dark flames going down for the preemptive retreat there, and now those Shooter Boys have to just run right through all of it. Not going to lose too many models to all of that, but either way. Sentinel getting into a bit of a mess here. I think he was breaking that wall just so they could have a different way to approach this turret, but it goes down for its effort. Dodge heading straight into tier three now, along with the Witchway. The Witchway has a pretty sizable army. Dodge has the two squads of, in or not Inquisitorial Stormtroopers, just normal Stormtroopers, not from the Inquisition apparently. But uh, going for the speed tech straight into tier three. Down bottom, it looks like some raptors might be perishing here if the apothecary gets another swing or two. The Devastator not quite able to finish them off, leaving them at 15 HP. Two squads of siege marines with those nasty, nasty inferno bolters right now. Let's see, does the Chaos Lord have a let the galaxy burn? It doesn't look like he does, but man, look how fast the burst damage on those inferno bolters is pretty nuts. Even suppressed, they may be able to deal with this Devastator. But not with an apothecary in their face, hacking away with that chain sword. That's going to be enough to push off all of those forces. Got some sneaky stormtroopers maybe looking to break some buildings of the tech marine right now. Let's see if their sneaky rescue op goes down. But no, some spots were able to intercept. And uh, no sneaky, sneaky for them. Stun bombs going off. Stick bombers looking for something to uh, to bomb here, but unfortunately everything is under the veil of this siege worship, so they don't really have an easy way to deal with all of this until they can get some spotters in here. Commando knob now moving in stealth. Explosive shot goes off once again, trying to pick apart this chaos position, but right now there is a newly purchased assault cannon dreadnought, which just paid for itself by taking out a squad of shooters on retreat. EM7 now looking like he has uh, quite a diminutive army right now. All he has is one squad of shooter boys, one squad of stick bombers. He does have a big pile of requisition though. He should be able to bring something onto the field here shortly. Luda's not, I guess he's getting some Luda's to deal with, uh, with this dreadnought, get a beanie gun on them. Stick bombs going down once again, coming in for the long throw there. Blowing up, nope, not blowing up any tactical marines. Scaring them off at least. What's going on? Oh, down bottom. Speaking of a lightning strike attack there. Went for a manticore hunt and found him one. Getting that melted gun. Always got to be careful with those manticores. Dodge now with just an infantry force over here. Vanguard veterans on the field now for the Witch Way. Dodge sitting in tier 3. I guess he's just at this point going for a Bane Blade. That's all he could be saving up for. But it's a 3 cap against the Reds. And uh, the blue team's just sitting here on their victory point. Everything's looking uh, pretty dire for the red team right now. Unless these these fast tier three techs can bring something onto the field that bane blade uh, that bane blade's probably going to be pretty effective there's not a whole lot of anti-vehicle on the field there's a couple setup teams but that's about it those don't tend to fare too well against the bane blade considering that demolisher shot so if they support the super tank that will eventually be coming out here i'm assuming they might stand a chance at getting this back but as it stands right now the blue team's in a commanding lead with a triple cap. Already 200 victory points up and very easily 
pushing off any forces that the red team send out here. Back in the resource lane, Siege Marines trying to finish off that Apothecary. Apothecary manages to take out a Heretic Squad, leaving Iron Warrior with just his Chaos Marines and Raptors. Iron Warrior knows he needs it. He's going to get that get those Heretics right back onto the field. Man, it's I, I'm surprised this turret and relay beacon are still standing. We got plasma devs, we got the last cannon. This is pretty much the definitive Tech Marine camp up here. He's got all the setup teams, he's got everything he needs to lock it down. He's even got a dreadnought up here, which is super difficult to deal with. What is this apothecary doing? He even triggered Angel of Death like he was intending to go in here and kill something, but there isn't any squad that's that difficult. Oh man. And he got what was coming to him, that Chaos Lord with the with the lightning claws. Ooh, that was nasty. Split right in half. 96 to 396, and still a 2-0 cap. Everyone's finally heading into tier 3 now. Or not everyone, but uh, we've got Cornholio now. Stick Bomb is all blasting away here. Unfortunately, just hurling Stick Bombs on top of worshipping heretics isn't going to accomplish much. He needs to get some spotters in here, but it's so difficult to approach this position with two of those Corn Havocs now on top of two squads of Space Marines. Stick Bomb is trying to do anything they can to try to stop this advance, but there's just nothing they can do. They don't have any staying power right now. EM7's army is pretty much just these Stick Bombers, so they can kind of bomb and support, but on their own, they're not really going to do much. You should probably even just join the rest of the forces here in the center and support them since he can't deal with this on his own. Two squads now of these Stormtroopers with their Melta kits looking to take out this Dreadnought, but unfortunately I don't think they're going to be able to do it. Let the Galaxy Burn hits down here. And I think took out an entire squad of Imperial Guardsmen right there. We've got another call, and this could be Terminators maybe? For the which way? I don't think he has the resource for that. No, it's just going to be some tactical Marines. For which way now with a squad? It looks like he lost at some point both of his initial tactical Marine squads. This Chaos Lord is a terror right now with those Lightning Claws and the Demonic Visage. Trying to make sure all the squads around him feel that hurt. He's got really solid melee damage like the Galaxy Burn. Excellent range options as well. Some Doom Bolts going down on the Bane Blade. They just bounce right off the armor there. Smashing against that heavily armored tank. Baneblade moving up, but uh, needs to be careful up here by itself, especially if this tech marine. Yeah, if that gets the orb of the Omnissiah. Let's see, does anyone have the red for a nuke? Unfortunately, they don't, because this is just asking for it right here. 81 to 347. They're managing to keep both of the center lane victory points in their hands, though. The blue team might be camping a bit too hard if they want to close this game out. Let's see what they decide to do. Baneblade moving in. That's not what you want to do. There's nothing here to support that Baneblade. Stick Bombers are coming out here. Iron Warrior's getting himself a Phobos. Oh, and here we go. This is some carnage we want to see. Stick Bombs right on top of that. Manticore strikes. Uh, got the... Whatever. I forget what that Napalm strike is there. It's not Napalm. It's, what, Promethium Fire or something like that? Something, something silly 40k word that I don't know. Hell Fury Strike, I think. Main Blade down to about two thirds of its health, but holding strong. Raptors now upgraded with their health and kits as well. These Vanguards are in there trying to do what they can against uh, overwhelming forces, realizing they just need to get out of there. Uh, Reds push this kind of in a haphazard way. If they would have pushed with the Main Blade right there, the Assault Marines could have jumped on that last cannon. That last cannon was really the only threat to that Main Blade. I think that was kind of just a botched engagement. Oh no! Commando now got run over by the plane mage right there. That's not actually what happened, but that's kind of what happened. Huge demolisher hit goes off. Stick bomb still flying in. Oh gee, this is insane. The, the blue team's really getting punished for being lobbed up right, right here, but uh, more stick bombs coming in. Look at this, right on top of everything. Melt the troops finally take out one of those tech marine buildings, but they need, to, oh, why did they retreat? They could have taken out that havoc. They could have done something right here. Blue team doing everything they can to try to dissuade this Bane Blade from moving in. Ooh, a little bit of friendly fire there from the Plasma Devastator. More sticks going down, not really hitting anything. There's only a lone model left. 
Stick Bombs are one of the few support teams that really want to have all of their models because all of their abilities depend on having more models right here. Looks like the Baneblade will survive to fight another day. Still backing up. Want to get that thing nice and clear. Red team still holding both of the center points. And the blue team, I don't think, despite losing tons of models right there from all of those various barrages that they took while retreating to that central relay beacon, I don't think they lost much in the way of squad. You can see they're sitting pretty pretty well right now. EM7 really needs to get something big on the field at this point. Probably looking to get some knobs. He's got so much resource. Maybe looking for a battle wagon instead, I guess, at this point. But as we're hitting this tier 3 point, you can see that the blue team is really starting to tech anti-vehicle hard. Oh man, those Raptors are wishing they didn't have those melt -the guns right now. With Vanguard veterans moving in. Actually, this drop pod here, you can see, uh, we saw which way actually move in position to get reinforced just for a moment there. I don't think, yeah, those Vanguards aren't going to be able to stand against the Phobos on their own. Right now, another Manticore on the field, the Bane Blade getting fixed up on the back lines. Still no capping going down though. Commando not managed to get the central point decapped at least to halt any further victory point. Lead 287 to 81. Red team's been sitting under 100 points for a while now. The Blues were sitting at over 300 once they initially hit that point. Okay, so EM7 looked like he wanted to go for a battle wagon, but decided instead now to go for the knobs. Probably a good choice. I think that knobs over the battle wagon is solid. As, as we were saying, you know, we see Plague Marines, we see the Phobos, the Raptors have their melted guns, uh, got the two auto cannons still on the field there. It's going to be a difficult for anything to approach right there. Oh man, it's a good thing they were paying attention. Those Terminators were in a world of hurt if they didn't get out of here. Upgraded with that Cyclone missile launcher. I love that thing. It's like the Calliope of Dawn of War 2. I guess it's not nearly as good as the Calliope, but you know, it's a pretty fun weapon. Sneaky operations going down some... Uh... Oh no, but it doesn't look like it's going to go well at all. They actually managed to put some serious hurt on that Phobos, but it might cost them the squads. Both of those Stormtrooper Melta squads trying to escape, and oh, wow, they're actually both going to get out of there. That's extremely fortunate. Phobos down to about 38 HP. I think maybe even that Mark will kill it if it doesn't get any reinforced. Oh, no, the Tech Marine's moving in to save it. It actually takes a very slow dot from that Mark. Oh, no, one last Tech, or sorry, Tech Marine didn't get in there for that last missile that finished it off. A pretty important kill right there. That's going to make the Bane Blade the definitive force right now on the field once again. Oh, Imperial Abyss goes down, but throws the last tactical Marine clear. Oh, but then pulls him back in to finish the job. There we go. Nope, he sent it back out. It's going to be fine. Oh, and there he goes back in. He's done. He's finished. Knobs on the back line here. I'm not sure what they were going for, but uh, that's a bit too much firepower for them to deal with. This Tech Marine turret is still up. Man, it is locked down up here. Two squads of Havocs, Devastator Cannon. This is just asking for some rocks right here, but EM7's been spending so much red on those, uh, that pair of stick bombers. Ooh! Nice Plasma Devastator hit. Actually managed to take out one of those squads. But it doesn't really matter. They can camp up there all they want. The victory points are in this lane, and the blue team hasn't been defending it. The red team's really been capitalizing on this lane, and that's what they're going to continue to do, it looks like. 62 to 275. They've got a long way to go, even though they are holding this side of the map right now. Bane Blade and Predator making short work of anything the blue team is sending down these stairs. You have a summoning circle allowing them to reinforce right now. Tomer subjugation getting upgraded as well. But uh, there's not really a lot that needs subjugating. Some stormtroopers kind of just thrown into the meat grinder right there. Manticore strike coming down on everything right now. It's pure chaos. Cyclone missiles going down on the Predator. Looks like that Manticore strike was enough to scare them off. One of the Havocs go down right there. 
Predator under a lot of fire. He teleported the Terminators in, but he forgot to forge melee on those Plague Marines. The Predator's gonna go down there. It goes. Slight misplay right there cost him a rather expensive unit. Dreadnought has to fall back in the face of all this armor. 264 to 52 right now. Oh, and we finally see the knobs getting in here. They probably used Hide the Boys to get in on that turret and finish it off. 264 to 48. Cornholio is starting to get frustrated here. A second Phobos coming on the field for Mr. Iron Warrior. Dandel is sitting with just two squads of Chaos Marines at this point. Manticore and Bane Blade support proving to be very effective at stopping these lobby pushes from the blue team. When they were pushing in, I mean, just look at this staircase. It's nothing but death right there. Bodies on both the top and bottom of that thing. Littering the landscape. Give me a challenge. And uh, I may have spoke too soon. The red team is definitely not out of it. 3-0 cap against the reds now. 220, or sorry, for the reds against the blues. 223 to 48. Cyclone going down there. Oh, and a Manticore Strike. That Demon Shield actually worked against them and hid the flare from the Manticore Strike. Huge losses there for the Blues. The Reds just holding strong on the natural victory point of the Blues. You can now see these Vanguard veterans under control of the Sorcerer. Wasn't quite enough to do much, though. The victory points are ticking off quick and the blue team just doesn't look like they have what they need to break this position. Inquisitor with the Inquisitorial Mandate and that Inferno Pistol just putting as much pressure on those vehicles as she can. Terminator's taking a lot of fire though, has to be careful with all those LAS cannons up there. The LAS cannons, the Fred and the Phobos can make pretty short work of all that. Man. It's, uh, it's getting brutal. Dandel is down to just a single squad. Cornholio getting a bit supercilious there towards the end of the game, getting frustrated that they had the game in their grasp. But finally, without their camp up top, 95 to 48. Let's see if the Blues can get any, anything done here. This is the last push they can pull off right now, but Nobs came in on the flank, eliminating this last cannon. That's gonna be the only real threat to these big Imperial Guard vehicles right now. Nobs picking apart the back lines and forcing off the tanks while the front line is getting obliterated by Ogrens, Vanguards, and those two giant tanks. Nobs managed to take out the Predator, gonna put pressure on the Terminators now before they fall back. But as it stands, 53 to 48 with a 2-0 cap, I think that's gonna be it for the Reds. That's all they needed to do was hold on this push. And I think that's gonna be it. The Phobos now in big trouble as well. Can't hold against the Bane Blade and the Lemon Rust on its own. These are the tankiest of the tanks right now and they're making short work of Predators and anything else. The blue team throws at them. The GG goes down as the last few victory points tick off. Down goes the Land Raider. Just as one final moral victory for the red team, which struggled so hard in the beginning of the game. And that's gonna be just about it. I didn't think that they were gonna be able to bring that back, but the Bane Blade really turned it around for them. The Blues, the Blues just spent so much time camping up here and didn't manage to do anything with it. They held this top VP, but the, the red team played it right. They played the center lane. They just didn't, after a while, I mean, they struggled up here for a couple engagements and it cost them some, that's probably what cost them the early game and so many VPs. But once they realized they were just able to ignore all of the investment that the blue team had put up here and just play the central map game, they were able to lock it down pretty well. Man, that was messy. There were some serious, some serious carnage in those engagements between the stick bombs and then uh, the push over here with the manticore. Oh, good stuff. Look at all these tank carcasses. I love it. I love it. I love it. I love it. Anyways, that's it for me. 
feel free to like, subscribe, comment, all that stuff. Send me your replays. Send me some two-on-two -two replays. I never get two-on-twos. I get ones. I get an endless supply of threes, but I never see two-on-two, -two, man. Shoot me those twos. This is Red Ruby. I'll catch you guys next time.